Capitol Hill as lawmakers point fingers about the fall of Afghanistan. GOP Senator Ben Sass lashing out at President Biden, saying that he's created a hostage situation in the making. But GOP Congressman Adam Kinzinger, who served in Afghanistan, says there is plenty of blame to go around. But let's keep in mind, Mike Pompeo met with the Taliban. As Donald Trump was publicly saying, we have to get out of Afghanistan at all costs, it's not worth it, Mike Pompeo meets with the Taliban and tries to negotiate something. By the way, they ended up getting rolled harder than never, almost as bad as Neville Chamberlain because they knew what the desired outcome of the Trump administration was. So they set this up to fail, but always, of course, uh, uh, Joe Biden could have easily turned this around and instead used it as the excuse to get out. Both parties have failed the American people, and it can't continue, and it particularly can't continue with just pointing fingers while America's embarrassed in front of the world. Joining me now, Democratic Congresswoman Barbara Lee of California. Congresswoman, nice to see you. In 2001, you were the sole member of Congress to vote against authorizing U.S. military force in Afghanistan. You were vilified for your vote that day. What was your reasoning then, and do you stand by what you said that day? Thank you, Pam. Thanks for uh, inviting me to be with you for a few minutes. Yes, I stand by that vote. Uh, this was a 60-word authorization to use military force. It was a blank check that set the stage for perpetual war, forever wars. It also uh, put forth uh, the framework to keep Congress out of performing its constitutional responsibility. You know, the Congress does, the Constitution requires the President to come to Congress to ask for an authorization to use military force. This authorization was so overly broad that uh, the executive power now has full range to use force, and that's why I'm trying uh, to repeal this. And having said that, now, um, well, also, then I knew that there was no military solution in Afghanistan, and you can just look at the history of Afghanistan, and in fact, I was very concerned that it was passed just three days after the horrific attacks against our nation and had no strategy, no plan, no exit strategy. And I'm the daughter of a military officer, 25 years in the military. And I knew good and well then that we should not give that kind of executive power, kind of authorization from the Congress to, to the president. So now where do we go from here? We have to make sure that every American citizen, every Afghan ally, all of our um, NATO um, friends and allies who are in Afghanistan, everyone who should get out, should get out. And we need to provide the resources for that and we should make sure that the evacuation plans go as smoothly as they can go. And I'm glad the president really did not paint a rosy picture. He said that it's dangerous, it's gonna be difficult, but we've got to do everything we can do to help save lives. He did uh, say that today, but he also said that every American in Afghanistan will make it home safely. How can he give that assurance if he's also saying in the same speech that a lot could go wrong? Well, he did say a lot could go wrong also, but we have to be committed to making sure that every American and every Afghan ally can get out of Afghanistan safely. Uh, we have to have that as a goal. We cannot do anything less. I mean, the Taliban, they're brutal. You see what's taking place now, and we cannot allow the uh, country, the people who have supported the United States through this last 20 years to be uh, subject to uh, getting their lives taken away from them. And that's exactly what could happen. And so the president's being very honest. I think he's saying everything that the country needs to hear in a very sobering uh, manner. He's telling the truth, and in fact, I'm still uh, supportive of his decision to withdraw from Afghanistan. He knows good and well, and he said it over and over again, that if we stay there, keeping our troops in harm's way, which they have done everything we have asked them to do, and we need to honor and salute our troops for doing their job, that in another 10, 15, 20 years, we'll still be there. Now, who knows what would take place in, in, the, in Afghanistan, given its history, and there's no military solution. So that I'm was the right decision. jump in. I'm going to jump in because the, the decision has been conflated with the execution. And so there are two separate things here. There is the decision to withdraw, 
Uh, President Biden ultimately made that decision, even though the deal with the Taliban was struck under the Trump administration. But then there is the execution aspect of this. And we are seeing the images on the ground, the chaos, people desperate to get out, people who have already lost their lives, Afghan um, allies who have lost their lives. So what do you say about the withdrawal? What do you think could have been better in that regard? Sure, and, and I'm one who says that this was poorly planned, that people's lives are in danger. For the life of me, I don't know why, when we knew that we had a deadline to get out, why in the world we did not have the appropriate plans in place. We know there would be chaos. I mean, that's to be expected, but we knew early on by that we needed to execute and provide for the special immigrant visas. We needed to get the planning in place. So we have to drill down and have oversight hearings and get the Congress more involved so we know exactly what happens so it'll never happen again. I chair the subcommittee on the Appropriation Committee that provides for the resources for diplomacy and development. And my subcommittee needs to know very quickly if we need more resources to help protect women and children and what to do to make this run smoothly. So nobody is uh, plotting this. No one's looking at this through rose-colored glasses. This has been a very perilous evacuation. And the president said it's, it's going to be uh, very dicey. It's going to be dangerous. And we have to do everything we can do, Pam, to, to get this done. We sure do. All right, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, thank you so much for your time on this Sunday. Thank you. Well, the COVID